car audio, etc. is proudly supported by Auto Sound and Security. Good morning guys, how's it going? James here from Car Audio, etc. Today I'm working on a fancy new Porsche. By the way, it's the 1st of December. Welcome to the Christmas season. Hope you're all having a good day. <laughs> Okay, oh it's a manual, sweet. So, this is our factory head unit. It's got an SOS button, man. It's got a lot of factory speakers. We got two ways over here, mid bass, and I don't know if that's a mid range or a tweeter. It could be a mid range because there's a tweeter up on top of the dash there. Center channel there, tweeter, and obviously the same in the back. This and there is rear speakers just there. And there, don't think there's any further over behind there. And we got steering wheel controls. As they're not getting the past, so we got volume up and down. Yet, he says some sheep farmers are already yeah. taking precautionary steps and sending lambs to the meat works early, flagging prices. Mm. I've been having for a long period of definitely turbo. Oh, no. No? I was going yes, yes, and then I saw these are stuck. Manual, yeah? No. No. I'm old man, I want, I want automatic. I just want to put my foot down and not have to worry about changing gears. Oh, pedal shifters would be nice. Pedal shifters, yeah. Mm. Hey, there's your pedal shifter. Volume up and down. I've had to put an A-cap um, interface into one of these to get the, the screen to display a reversing camera. Real. Fucking hell. What a mission. Yep, that's what I've got today. I've got a bit of a mission. New stereo. But he supplied all the gears. Mm. So, as long as it works. Is that a Japper? Don't think no, so. It's not. No, it's not. No. no, it's not. It's got New Zealand frequencies on it. I think this is the turbo model. I think this is turbo day. Yeah. Because like I, so I can't hear it in here, but when I was outside, I could hear it going, Wee! Kill. Right now, what are these steering wheel controls are working? So we've got this one here. Oh yeah, so that does move that up and down, whatever that's expected to do, I'm not sure. We've got a back button, a phone hang up button, an answer button, a page change button, which, oh, okay, so that goes through all that. And often, it's not just one, but quite a few that are It's like you put, oh, I think you put a SIM card in that, man. It's for the car phone. Oh yeah, there we go. Visit our show homes. It appeared to be inspired. In the all new BMW E3. This is Christchurch BMW. Suzy Manchester Street to find out more. So I'm guessing the main reason he's changing this out is because he wants CarPlay more than anything. Because we're putting a CarPlay stereo on. And I mean, this seems like a pretty smart looking, a smart unit. Like it's got New Zealand stations. Can take a SIM card for the car phone. It's got something over here, Navi, but I'm not sure if how do I get it going. Like how I get into it. You got your trip data, like a lot of car information here. Mail not available. Info. Telephone. Don't know. It just it just seems pretty smart. Good SOS button up here. I just don't know what that does though, so I'm not going to push it. Map. Oh shit, we do have a map. Does it know where we are though? Maratahu Street and Tukapa Street. So those are Maori names, so obviously it's Maori maps, but this is nowhere near where we are, so I'm not sure if it knows where we are or not. So anyway, I'm installing a Pioneer MVH Z5050 because he wants Apple CarPlay. And apparently there's a bunch of stuff in the boot for me. Which in this car should be in the front. He said there was a little button, or I can push it off the key. Where's the button? Did it release the front? Yep. So the boot is in the front. And there's all the gears. Okay. 
So this is a 2007 Porsche 911, but he calls it a 997. I'm not sure why. If any of you out there are Porsche people, you probably know why. But I don't know why. Anyway, so I've got a box of goodies here that he has supplied me with because uh, he brought this car in quite a while ago and uh, showed it to us and we just saw that it had steering wheel controls. He said, I want those to go. And we saw that it had bows and he said, yep, that needs to work. And we all just sort of shook our heads and went, it's probably possible, but it's not something we've done before. And uh, I have no idea where we would get the parts or where we would even start. So to make things easier on us, he went out and got all the parts himself. We don't need that. So he got us the fitting kit from Metra. Now, Metra is a supplier of us, of ours, as you, as you would know. But um, I think he imported a lot of this stuff from America, so that probably does have something to do with why we couldn't get these parts. Anyway, he's got the 999606G, which, after looking at it, does match the face of the um, dash really well. Comes with a pocket, but we won't be using it. We've got a big couple of big harnesses in here. We've got a Kinex 2. GTSP 0005.2 Porsche 911 Boxster or Cayman Fiber Amp ISO. So this is what helps you connect to the fiber optic amp. And there's also a little connect to uh, steering wheel control module in there. And we've got a connect to patch lead to go with it as well. So hopefully all that stuff works. We just have to hope because uh, when things like, when modules like that don't work, there's kind of real no diagnosis you can do to it. Like, you just have to hope it works. So I'm going to uh, start getting the stereo out of the dash and seeing what's in behind there. Hopefully the plugs will match up. By the way, over in the other room, Grant is working on a boat. He's got a CSB Huntsman in here and he's chucking a stereo and a couple of speakers in it that the customer has supplied. Whoa! <laughs> he's going to stick... Uh, I'll try and show you a wee bit later on, but he's got a little fusion stereo over there which is going to go over on the right there below the switches. I'm not sure what the plan for those fusion box speakers in there is, but um, I'll try and uh, keep you updated with how that's going along throughout the day as well, just for a bit of interest. I love how when you buy fancy cars and stuff like that, it comes with stuff like this, like a little, whoop, a little dedicated pen holder for your, for your Porsche pen. And that just pops in up here and, and you've got to have the label facing out otherwise you won't know that it's a Porsche pen. What's this? Uh, it's just a couple of CD holders in there. Lightning cable and a manual. Hey Grant, do you know how you get the stereo out of this? Just want to check that the uh, heater and everything works. Goes up to high and down to low. Fan goes all the way down to zero and the fan goes all the way up to... You know, that lifts the spoiler up and down. Cool. In case you want a wee bit more spoiler control. In case all of that works. Oh, these things. You got dual level seat heaters on the left and right. Doesn't seem to have an off button. Okay. How the hell does this come apart? Okay, so I got, um... There's this thing which is way down at the very end of this panel here which is just held in with uh, two tongues and one big, oh, it's either a T25 or a T27 torque screw that held that in and that just sort of unthreaded. And then there's two more screws at the base of this big piece of triangle leather here, which I got out and so now this thing apparently just, oh yeah, comes forward, I'm guessing. Got one part, must just come forward. There we go. Like that. Cool. Now the other side. Now this one just. The tops are hardest to get because you can kind of like push from the back side, which gets the bottom out, but get the top. There we go. You sort of pull from the back, and if you put your hand here, it forces the top to come out. And now there are two security nuts that you've in here that you have to get. Oh, maybe only one. One on this side, not on this side. Oh wait, maybe it's these things you have to get. Oh man, they look like a bastard. But I think they're what I need to get. Okay, so it wasn't actually that nut there at all. Oh well. 
now I need to turn these a little bit because oh yeah so turning these little five millimeter hex nut things what it does is they kind of you only have to turn it like maybe half a turn and it grabs the fingers which are locking this thing in place and it compresses them in so that it can slide out but let's get it there we go because yeah it'll stop once it gets to the end now there's one and there's some more, presumably I can't really see what I'm doing there we go okay now right now does the stereo come out yes look at that Okay, before I unplug anything, I'm gonna get out the harnesses and see if they look anything like what we got here. We've got two uh, European style aerials, a fiber optic connector, one ISO plug for power, and a mini ISO block with three in one end, two in the middle, and one in the far end. Let's see if that's anything like what I've got in uh, the harness bag. Because if this is wrong, then there's absolutely no point in me unplugging the stereo. Who knows what will happen if I do that. Okay, so this is the instructions for the stereo, for how to harness it all up. That's going to do volume, two is going to be your source button, three is going to be answer, one is going to be track up and track down, two isn't going to do anything, three is going to hang up. Okay, cool. Here's our big harness. Okay, now where does that go? Okay, so that's going to plug into there at some point. That's just our, our steering wheel control module. So we've got an ISO connector for positive, for just power and earth. No, nothing else, no accessory or illumination or anything. And then this mini ISO connector only uses the blue and white wires which are the, obviously going to be the CAN wires at the far end here and then for the fiber optic it looks like it plugs into this box so this little thing is going to plug into here looks like this comes out oh yep oh uh, stereo turned off or something that's going to plug into there okay cool so it looks like all the plugs are going to line up and work the only thing I can really do is uh, I guess try it and hopefully Disconnecting this from power, hopefully it's not like you know security coded or anything bullshit like that, and we can't get the can't get it back in. That would suck. Anyway, everything looks like it'll work. So keys out of the barrel, start unplugging things. That's one aerial. That's the other aerial. Oh, they intentionally made it so you couldn't unplug the fiber before you unplug the power. Clever, clever German people. Cool. And there's the factory unit out. Oh look at that. It all goes up to some kind of connector up here. That's strange and interesting. I feel like that's meant to be mounted up there somehow. Just a thought. Here's our wiring. Cool. Note for installing a Sony stereo, disconnect the interface from the vehicle, open the interface box and ensure dip switch 4 on the PCB is set to off. But we're not doing a Sony, we're doing a Pioneer so that's okay. Get on the back. Really all I need to do is I want to do a test so what I'm going to do is uh, start I want to start like getting this loom all sort of made up and connected to the uh, Pioneer harness and then I'm just going to do a test with it here on my lap and hopefully everything works and if it doesn't don't know what I'm going to do. So I've kind of like laid it out here a wee bit and I've figured out a couple of things that I'm going to do. I almost plugged this into the uh, Connect 2 box but I know that you're not supposed to do that for some reason they're very temperamental and it even says here you're supposed to connect the lead to the stereo before you connect it to the connect 2 box because this as soon as you connect the lead even if it's not got power on it possibly it senses the resistance and the setup on this plug and then if you don't have the stereo plugged into it it can send it all out of whack I don't know I have had problems with them in the past but anyway something strange is that this does come with like a speaker and power ISO connector at each end but I only need power so what I'm going to do is take these yellow and black pins out of the power side and repin them into this single ISO connector and then obviously at this end they'll all get cut off and soldered to the uh, stereo wires. Ok 
Okay, so I've got my harness like all at least soldered up. It's not loomed or anything yet, but what I want to do is a full test before I actually like, you know, tidy and loom it all up. Otherwise, if it doesn't work, I don't want to have to unloom it all. So um, let's get this set up here where you guys can see what's going on. So I think one of the key things that Connect 2 prefer you do is hook everything to the stereo before you hook it to anything else. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is hooking the steering wheel control harness to the stereo first. That goes in there. Next we've got main power harness in the stereo. Little RCA leads that come on here. Um, I'm guessing it's just going to be two channel stereo going into this fiber optic amp and there's not going to be any fader or independent subwoofer control. So I'm just going to hook these straight to the, thanks, straight to the front RCA outputs. Next, I need to start hooking up some boxes. Next, I think I'm going to, it's a wee bit tangly, but I'll tidy it all up once I loom it. And the only thing I wasn't sure what, what, what this uh, wire did, it's a red one, and um, it went to the position above where accessory normally is on ISO, which would correspond, and, and here would correspond to um, where the aerial lead often is, but it wasn't at the uh, car end, it was at the stereo end, so I'm not sure what that means. So I'm just going to leave it for now. Not sure what that is, there's no real explanation for it. Actually, let's plug in our Connect 2 steering wheel control harness into the stereo there. And now plug that into the main harness connection, which is this. I swear to God, I hope this works. Next, we need to plug in our big Connect 2 module doodacky, which just plugs in on this one side here. That's that done. Now I think I'll plug in the uh, the fiber optic into this box next, just like that, and then the CAN bus wires plug goes on next, and then finally the very last thing we hook up is positive and negative power, and there we go. It's all in. Let's get the key. Stick it in the hole, stick it in the hole, if I can find the hole, there we go, put the key in, does that turn it on? It does, oh my god the stereo turns on when you put the key in the barrel. Okay so the accessory output is working, so that's one thing, English, Australia, okay, uh, let's see if we get audio, no audio, although that be could be because we haven't got an ear all plugged in. Oh. The stereo turned off. Could that be due to voltage? Oh, must, maybe there was a timer on it or something. I've just put it on ignition now. So it's turning on again. Let's uh, go to the steering wheel control. So on this we need to go to settings. Steering wheel control is in grey. And we have to have the source off for that. Let's go there. Steering wheel control. We have to click with adapter. Setting. Okay. Home. Radio. Let's, does volume work? Oh yes, volume works. Okay, that's a good start. Seek up. Oh, that goes through the presets. It has a clicker as well. Does clicker do anything? No. For some reason. Um, mode? It does work. Oh my god, okay, so that's that's good news. The steering controls are all working. I need to get an aerial adapter so we can try and get some sound out of it. Actually, just for now, just for now, I'm just going to plug an auxiliary cable into the back of the stereo and play some music that way. Aux input from my phone. Okay, that's playing aux. No sound. Hmm. No sound. Why would that be? That's an unfortunate. Everything's good except we don't have any sound. Why don't we have any sound? Guys, don't think it's a battery thing. Let's just start the car to make sure. It doesn't let me unless the foot is on the clutch. Unless it has to do with this wire. Now, this red wire here, as I say, was in the ISO block position that would have connected to the remote output of the stereo. So I'm just going to try hooking that up and hopefully it may be a remote turn on. We just want to make sure the volume of this thing is down. Let's see if this does anything. Oh, we have sound. Okay, so that is a remote output. And then if I take it off. Right, okay, sweet. So this red wire is the remote turn on for the um, fiber optic box. And they must have had it in the remote position rather than accessory to avoid uh, popping. 
Cool. Okay, so that's good. Oh, we've got sound. Sweet as. So I have to put that there. So this communicates through the fiber optic line to turn the amplifier on, obviously. Oh, freaking sweet, guys. I love it when everything works straight away. Yes. Cool. Okay, what a... I'm so happy! I love it when these things work straight away because because when it doesn't work it's just such a headache and you have to go through diagnosis, often call up Australia and be like, this thing's not working and then they can't really help you. And, whoop, it's tilting. So what I can do now is take all this back out, loom it up nice and tidy, get the stereo mounted in the kit, put an aerial adapter on and chuck it in the hole and call the job done. Awesome! I've got to install a microphone and a USB cable as well but that's pretty easy. So that's freaking awesome. Cool. Okay, time to put the stereo in. I've got the microphone mounted up and wire ran down the A pillar and behind the glove box. Getting the glove box out is one hell of a mission just for <laughs> glove box removal. And I've also got the USB running to the glove box. Um, after discussing it with the customer when he booked it in, he originally thought he might have it in this little pocket down under here, but after I said yeah, or you know, I often put them in the glove box because that's the usual spot, he said, oh no, I like that. So um, he wanted me to put it in the glove box. So all I did was I drilled a hole in the side up here, which doesn't get interfered with by this opening and closing. And uh, it's big enough for this male head to go through, but not big enough for the female head to go through. So you'll see if I pull on it now, it, uh, it won't come back through, so it can't get lost. And I'll do something in here to secure this so that this can't get yanked on too much. Just pull that through. Okay, so let's put this in now. Just gotta re-plug all this in in the correct order so we don't mess anything up. Steering wheel remote, what's up? Just perfect. Oh yeah, cool. Okay. Gonna plug it all in the, in the right order. It's good fun. I've already tested it and it does work, so that's <coughs> good news for me. Good. Yeah, it does connect too, and the yeah. steering wheel controllers connect too as well. Yeah. It plugs into there. Oh right, the only thing I haven't worked out is whether or not I need an amplified aerial adapter or not. I'll do some testing to figure that out. Would you be able to grab me one of each aerial adapter and I'll test which one we need? Try the non-amplified one first. See if we get any signal from that. Uh, let's try the black one. Radio. AM. No AM with that one. Plugging it into the other adapter doesn't make a difference. Okay, let's try the amplified aerial adapter. Try the black one first. Okay, and plug this into here, nothing. Let's try the orange one. That's a bit better. Still no AM. That's a bit better. I think that's probably about as good as it's gonna get. Was, and it wa wasn't any worse really with this one. Wonder if you have to put power on that wire there. There it is. Yes. That's the wire. So I gotta put power on this wire that's in the ISO block and then use the unamplified aerial adapter. Cool, problem solved. Okay, time to try and put all of this bad boy in. I've got the remote wire for the aerial wired up. Um, what else can I do? Oh, I do need to maybe just loom those things together. We'll plug this back in as well. There we go. I wish I'd test and tape any of this factory loom stuff. Nothing will leave it. That's how it was. Okay, now getting this all in here looks like an absolute mission. Where's the hole? It'll be there somewhere. Okay, and I also want to connect up my phone to Bluetooth and just test that the microphone is working. 
English Australia. Okay, firstly, let's go to settings, general, steering wheel control, with adapter, complete, okay, cool. Why is the steering wheel control not working? They were working before. Maybe we need to try unplugging it all from power again. Dang, I hate it when this happens. It was working, and then, you know, you go to put it in, and then it decides it doesn't want to work for that time. It's freaking annoying, man. This up first, to there, then this, to there, and then this, to there. English, Australia, even though we're in New Zealand. Settings, general, steering wheel control, with adapter, done. Okay, radio. Okay, there we go, now we've got steering wheel controls working. Bluetooth, Pandora, Spotify, iPod, AUX, radio, there we go. Check that we got AM. Yep, all good. Okay, now I do want to check that Bluetooth works. The yes pair. Cool. Done. Okay, now I need to. I'm going to uh, call my phone from the landline that we have here, and I'm going to test the buttons on the steering wheel for answer and hang up. Calling my phone, getting a call. Don't have. A, there is the ringtone. If I click the button on the uh, steering wheel, yo yo, test test, test test one two three, test test, yep just checking that I can hear myself on the uh, handset here and the microphone is working so that's good, and hang up, that works as well, cool, and also if I redial and cool, now if I hit the, the hang up button on the steering wheel it should decline. And it goes to the voicemail from my phone. Cool, everything's working. Great, I can get it in the hole. Get it in the hole. Get it in the hole. Plugged in, USB, microphone, wide remote, aerial, RCAs. Now the fun part. The fun place for all this crap. Just a wee bit more. Yes, and it snaps into place. Snapped into place. Awesome. Um, phone. Let's just check CarPlay's working. CarPlay, awesome. I just need to switch this over to the right hand side. So that's good. CarPlay, let's do that now before I forget. Settings, driving position on the right, there we go. I just want to see what happens when I play with the fader because I've got these plugged into, I think the front output. The RCA's had little tags on them saying going to the rear left and rear right, but I'm going to the front just because I think it's going to be better for if we have it set to listening position. Nothing at the rear. Yeah, it's all at the front, so we'll have it set to the front there. By the way, the speaker wires are all taped up individually and uh, separated from each other. Cool, everything's working. I can um, start putting it back together. Let me just show you what I mean by that. So now if I um, plug it back in, the, oh, no, you're right. The bar for CarPlay should now be on the right-hand side. Yep, there we go, now it's on the right-hand side. Sweet. So what I can do now is uh, do a quick little time lapse and screw everything back together and then show you it all once it's, once it's done. Cool. Sounds like Grant might have uh, got the speakers going on the boat. Two zones, eh? Yeah. Can you turn zone two off? I don't know. You must have um, uh, a ROM chip or something that keeps the memory. Oh, right, uh, yeah, a little bit of memory in it, yep. Yeah, because when you pop it, it's a so he's got these uh, little, what are they, Fusion MS0, uh, MS0 S420, which are little 4-inch Marines boxed speakers down in the corners there. 
the doors uh, customer purchased them with his idea, his request, day. so that's what they've been put. And the stereo it's over on the right-hand side there. Birthday, Riders on the storm kicked off the midday sound wave. That's pretty and high. And it's KB with you in the middle of a long set. Still to come, Cream, also Alan Parsons' project, something from those guys soon. Uh, Alan Parsons obviously was a, a young... It's not super loud, eh? No, I don't get it, yeah. They don't go, like, that head unit's output, that was nearly max and it wasn't that loud. No. Could do a little uh, two-channel channel what amplifier or something like that. Oh, we'll see if he's happy with that. He might come back saying it's not loud enough and then we'll be like, well, <laughs> you should have put Rockford Fosgate stereo and speakers and amplifiers and sound editing and batteries and everything in there, shouldn't you? And subwoofers and, whoop, I'm falling off the boat. Cause this, compared to that Bayliner I did a while ago with those four eight inch Rockford Fosgate coaxial speakers and the, and the 400 watt amp and the Rockford Fosgate stereo, <laughs> That was way better. Still, it's interesting. We don't do boats hugely often, but we can do them. It's not out of our field of expertise. So there you go. That's what Grant did on the boat. And uh, yeah, now the Porsche, it's all back together and ready to go. I'm just going to give you guys one sort of final rundown and show you and maybe do a wee bit of tuning as well. Now the only sort of downside to this is having this awesome stereo is that, um, so it runs like just the front RCA outputs into the fiber optic module as opposed to front and rear so there's no way to have any fader or adjustment between the front and the rear. I am going to do some uh, some time alignment but I'm just going to do it for the, like the front left speakers because for the front left and right because um, you're not going to you can kind of hear the rear speakers a wee bit but obviously you're not going to be able to get any sort of front to left uh, front to back adjustment anyway but since it at least comes out stereo and then goes through goes stereo into the uh, amplifier maybe we'll be able to get a little bit of left to right time alignment you know adjusted but it's not going to be as good as if it was going full four channel RCA or four channel speaker wires to speakers you know but it's all good let's just do that first and then we'll look at some other stuff we can change settings oh something else I realized I can do is uh, I can actually go where are they I'm pretty sure this has a setting for rear speakers on or off, I thought. Where is it? Bass boost, loudness. I swear this had a rear speaker on off setting. Maybe that's in my stereo and it's not in this one. Because I've got it faded all the way to the front. Huh. That's different, unless it's in general. Because. No, not there. Okay. I thought there was a setting in this to turn the rear speakers on or off, but uh, obviously they've taken it out. Got it faded to the front. Subwoofer is off, speaker level, change position to front right, crossover, we'll leave the crossover off because it goes digital into the uh, Bose amp and then that's going to do all of its own crossing off. Listening position, front right, time alignment, now I'm going to adjust some of this. It doesn't really matter what I have the rear one set to because there's nothing connected to the rear RCAs or speaker wires, so there's literally no point in even touching or changing those at all but I can adjust the front left and front right since that's the RCAs that I've got the um, interface connected to. So let's just do that. Normally I do this with two hands, but uh, see if I can do it with one. So to the front left channel, we'll go to the mid range because it's right above the, uh, we'll go to that corner there because that's about averaged between the mid bass, the mid and the tweeter. Looking around about maybe 120 centimeters. So we changed this one here down to 120 centimeters oops there it was and now this one by the way something I was doing at the very end there um, I just moved his little radar controller down a wee bit because the place that the original that it was originally sitting it was here but whoever installed it put it just slightly too high and he couldn't actually fit his finger in between these two and there's a button on top of it to turn it on and off you know, and he wants to be able to do that, but he couldn't fit his finger in there, and neither could I. So I've just moved it down like half a centimetre, so now there's enough room for my finger, and um, I'm not saying his fingers are chubby, but if someone ever uh, drives this car or owns this car and they've got a fat finger, there's a bit of extra space in there to fit it in. And then it displays over there. Whoops, focuses. Thank you. Okay, now let's measure the right hand side. I'm going to do it into that corner there because that's where I poked this uh, tape measure. I poked the tape measure for measuring this side over to there. 
because that's kind of average between the mid bass, the mid range, and the tweeter on the top of the dash. I'm going to do the same for here. Just plug this into that corner there. It looks like we're at about 80 centimeters. 80 centimeters, there we go. And just for shits and gigs, I'm just going to make these both 100 because it really doesn't matter what they're on. There we go. That's the front right. Front. Ha! When you go to the front, there's no adjustability whatsoever and it puts everything to square at 100, which makes sense, but it's ironic because uh, the distance, the difference between uh, the front left and front right is exactly 40, and so if you divide that out and distribute it evenly, it goes to 100 on every single channel. And then we'll go to the front right and then... Whoa! What was that? Grant drop his, did Grant drop his toolbox? Right. Oh yeah, cool, the front left is already set. Sweet as. So hopefully that, I know it's not full time alignment and it is, it has got a center channel and, and it has got mid bass woofers and mid ranges and tweeters which are all, you know, not got their own separate time alignment. So I realize you don't need to tell me that, oh, it's not gonna be perfectly accurate. I am aware of that, but maybe it'll help a wee bit, you know. I think he mainly just drives it by himself. It's like his baby. It's his uh, toy car, Sunday driver. So that's that. Listening position currently is front right. Save settings, okay. Set sound and settings saved, sweet. Now, let's, uh, let's go to CarPlay and listen to some music and see if we want to adjust anything else. No, I'm gonna have um, the loudness on off because on low, like on most set in most situations, having the loudness set to low sounds pretty good, but on this car, it just sounds too much bassy. There's already a really good amount of bass in this car, so just having that off will be fine. Automatic level control, we'll leave that off. Sound retriever mode one, that's fine. Bass boosters on zero, we don't want that on. Time alignment is set. Crossover we're leaving off, as I said, because uh, the amplifier, the Bose amp in this will do all of its own crossing off. Set those to minus 24, which is as low as they go. Wish I could turn them off. And now, the volumes of the front channels. Let's have a listen. I like to just sort of play around with this until it sounds good. Okay, guys. It's all done and back together. I've done the, done the tuning and everything as uh, much as I can. I've played with the settings. Made it look all nice in the car. Kind of an icy blue color. Go home. I went for like the plain sort of background as opposed to anything with lines because all of this is all very sort of smooth looking so I tried to make it look as good as I could. Moved these sorts of things around to, to a um, position which, which makes the most sense. So he's got like the phone and CarPlay over this side, then you got radio, Bluetooth audio, Spotify, USB input for memory sticks, iPod connection, source off and power off and uh, when you unplug it from the phone it switches back to like this sort of view so you just got like the radio bluetooth pandora and usb and you can still get to the rest of them by clicking that i don't know how the frick you turn pandora off like there's no option to turn pandora off which is annoying just because it means that if you skip through the sources bluetooth spotify ipod pandora and it makes you go through that just wish you could turn it off but I don't know how but uh yeah anyway sounding real good a couple of interesting things I discovered about the steering wheel controls so um on on radio this like does obviously the volume but uh clicking this doesn't do anything right and I'm not sure if it's the same case for uh things like bluetooth and usb and that but I found that just on CarPlay, so if I go to CarPlay here, play a song on CarPlay, so now, still got volume, but then if I click this, oh, well, it's not doing it There we go. See, after a while, it sort of kicks in. Like, you can click this. Why well, is it not doing it There we go. It's weird, it's intermittent, but you click this and you get, it's not fully mute, but it's attenuated. Strange, eh? So I don't know why it doesn't do it on radio. 
So, and when you push this to go back to radio, it doesn't change your display, it just changes the audio. So now we're on radio. But uh, we're still on. I guess that's good for GPS, but uh, yeah. Oh, what? Now clicking this does give you a. That's really weird. It like takes a while for the sort of for the mute function to kind of program itself and kick in. I don't know why, but uh, clicking this button over here still does nothing. Maybe with a bit more time, I can figure out if it does anything. I tried going into the settings and uh, doing it without, like doing the steering wheel controls without adapter mode, both Japanese and Korean, but uh, it wouldn't learn the steering wheel controls in that mode. So I just put it back to with adapter and use the preset functions. But something else I found f rather interesting. So this one is set to do presets. You can roll it up and down like that, and it goes through the presets. Actually, that's really annoying. I'm rolling down at the moment, and it's going down in the numbers, but up on the screen. I wish it was the other way around. I wish you rolled the roller up and it would go down in the number. But, um, so yeah, that's what that's meant to do. But, because this is a roller, you can't really like hold the function, but I found if I go like, if I go like this, it seeks. Oh what? Maybe not anymore. There we go. If you do it right, sometimes you can get it to seek. No, that that was preset. You've got to do it slowly because you've got to hold the function for a certain amount of time. There we go. So I'm just going like this. Like, if you hold the function for long enough, it seeks as opposed to goes through the presets. It's kind of funky. Um, obviously, if these were up and down buttons, holding the button would cause it to seek. And so what it's thinking is that by me rolling that for a long period of time, it thinks that I'm uh, holding the seek up or seek down button. Back button still doesn't do anything unless maybe if we're, maybe if we're on car play, I'm not sure. Couldn't find Pandora. Got to get to Go, doesn't go to CarPlay through the source skip for some reason. You go like this, it goes over to CarPlay. But if, um, I wonder if this back button will take me through the menu. No, maybe not. If I go playlist and then click this return button. No, it doesn't do anything. I'm pretty sure it did say in the manual that came with it that it would not be used. And it said if applicable, clicking this button would do band. But for some reason it doesn't do band or anything. So it's funny, but um, you can seek up song, you can skip song, like click once to skip, next song. I was hoping maybe I could like program one of these buttons to do voice control so we can use Siri, but it, yeah, nah, I can't program them unfortunately. So uh, what about if I just click the phone button, anything? Nope. Nope, what if I hold it? Nope, nothing. Hold this one. Nope. I wonder if I go into phone and I just go into uh, contacts. This guy, haven't got a number for him for some reason. Okay, I wonder if I, actually, we, I don't want to accidentally call someone I don't really want to speak to. Um, I've got my favorites here. I wonder if I click the call button, does it start to call him? No, it doesn't, okay. I'm just trying to figure out every function that has been programmed into these, because that whole mute thing kind of working and then sometimes working and then not, is just, it's just strange. It's working now though. It's not a full mute, it's just attenuate. But yeah, it's all working. By the way, the uh, reverse trigger does work, but I've got it, the camera turned off, so putting it in reverse doesn't do anything now. But uh, yeah, it's working really nicely. I just wish I could turn off frickin' Pandora. I might actually have a read through the manual and see if there's any way I can turn Pandora off real quick. Oh, and so the microphone, by the way, just got it. Now I'll see if I can get it to focus with all that light behind there. If I go like this. My fancy camera, I can go like this, but up, but up, but oh, there it goes. And just there you go, now you can see the uh, microphone. I've intentionally put it sideways because not me, I don't know if everyone knows this, but that grill on the front there is a fake grill, no sound actually goes into that, it all goes into those side vents. Um, putting your finger over this would not stop people from being able to hear you, covering up these ones, it does. So I've intentionally put it like that and I think it looks quite sort of maybe a classy a wee bit, I'm not sure. The wire just sort of ducks up and away there, hides. Yeah, is that mirror fixed? Yes it is. What up? It's you guys. 
So there we go. Yeah, the Porsche's done. It was actually a lot easier than I was fearing it was gonna be. As Grant says, Connect 2, very good brand. Very rarely do we have problems with them. But I just always, I never get myself uh, too excited. Grant's taking off, leaving me to deal with the whole shop by myself. Um, yeah, I never get myself too confident when it comes to anything CAN bus related or steering wheel controls or module related because I just have such bad luck with uh, interface modules whether it be for a factory amp or steering wheel controls that I don't like to get ahead of myself but it all worked so I'm happy and it sounds good in here it's a bit of a song what else have we got in here I need to uh, change the contrast back to zero I've just got the engine running at the moment as well by the way guys because the only way to keep the stereo on is to have the ignition on. Like, I, there is an accessory where if I just turn the key off uh, it stays an accessory but then it times out after not long. A little bit of Skillex. By the way all the speakers are going including the tweeters, the centre channel and the two door subs and the rear speakers as well. Only thing I don't like is it takes me ages to turn the volume all the way down. It's not a very responsive steering wheel control interface. Like, it obviously just has a slow refresh rate and if you go like this and do like 10 clicks it only goes down like two or three because it's got a slower refresh rate than the factory stereo. I wonder if I can play with this uh, EQ a wee bit, turn the treble down. Yeah it sounds a wee bit better. Um, I tried uh, raising up the, the 80 hertz a wee bit because there's a lot of sort of good sub bass but very little actual mid bass like very little hit just all bass line and that'll just be down to the way the factory Bose amplifier is crossed off the subs are probably crossed off at something stupid like 70 hertz and then there's like a gap in the 80 hertz range sounds a bit better now it's just I feel like the subs are going real good and the tweeters are going real good but the mid ranges aren't doing much either It's just, I think what it is, is the fact that these sixes that are in the doors are set up to be like subwoofers, so they're low passed really, really low, like 70 or 80 hertz. And then the next speaker that plays music after that is a little, I'm assuming three or four inch mid range, and that is not going down to like, you know, the 80 hertz region. So I feel like there's a bit of a gap in the 80 hertz to 100 hertz range in this car. But it sounds good. If he, ever, if he ever wants to, you know, sort of clean that up a wee bit, what it would involve obviously is quite a big job. It would mean a new amplifier somewhere, maybe in the factory location, in the factory amplifier location, that can power all the speakers running RCAs from the head unit straight to it, as opposed to using fiber optic to go into the factory one where it does all of its own crossing off and everything like that. Because yeah, there's definitely just a frequency gap. But that's the sort of thing that you can't fix when you keep with factory systems. But it looks good anyway, I'm happy with it. Well there we go guys, that's going to be today's uh, kind of hopefully interesting video for you guys. Um, I'm just glad everything went well. So yeah, thanks for watching today's video guys. I hope you all have yourselves an enjoyable weekend. If you're in New Zealand, it's a great day this weekend so get into that. Uh, cheers for watching guys, choose to be happy, remember to like my page on Facebook, support me on Patreon and give this video a like and subscribe and all of that fun stuff. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you next time. Kakete ano.